if I had a treaty, I'd sign it in the morn, I'd sign it in the evening, all over this land. I'd sign for justice, I'd sign for freedom. It's a treaty about love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. If I had a hammer, I'd ring it in the mall. Ring it in the evening, all over okay, this we're land. Ready to go. Is everybody set? We have two people we need to hear from. First is Kathleen Sullivan from the New York campaign to abolish nuclear weapons. Because of her work and many other people she brought, the United Nations sent a message to the world. You can tell us about it, Kathleen Sullivan. Hi, everyone. I just want to first echo on something that Joanne was talking about. Um, just last week, we commemorated um, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Everybody likes to sanitize his message. You know, civil rights, human rights, yes. But he was also about poverty and the problems of capitalism and also about militarism. Dr. King and other civil rights leaders like Baird Rustin, a New Yorker, recognized nuclear weapons as the ultimate tool of white supremacy. Nuclear weapons are racist, they are colonialist, they are patriarchal, they must be got rid of for the sake of our planet, as Owl just said, for the sake of lifting each other up. What is exciting right now in New York City is that we have just passed legislation through City Council making New York City again a nuclear weapon free zone, creating the impetus for our new comptroller Brad Lander to divest our pension funds from nuclear weapon producers. This is fiscally responsible, it is morally responsible. Also in this legislation, we will be revisiting the spots where uranium was stored for the Manhattan Project. The nuclear age was born in New York City, from Poopin Hall in Columbia University, where the first successful fission experiments occurred, to the offices downtown where the Manhattan Engineering Project existed. Also sites in Queens, Staten Island, and here in Manhattan, uranium was stored for the nuclear weapon project in Los Alamos. Do New Yorkers know that there are still Superfund sites that need remediation from a project to build a bomb over 75 years ago? We're going to do that with this legislation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'd just like to say briefly, this coat is very warm. This coat was my friend Sandy Parker's. Sandy died just a month ago. This coat is keeping me warm. There are many New Yorkers who are freezing on the streets right now because they don't have a home. They don't have a warm coat like this. While the United States government invests in weapons of omnicide, People in our own country are starving and dying from cold. This cannot continue to happen. So in the spirit of my beloved friend, Sandy Parker, I'd just like to ask all of us just to think for one moment about somebody we love, about something we love, about the trees, as Owl just said. I'm sure that all of us here, if we saw a young child run into traffic, we would do everything we could to save that child. When we think about who we love and what we love, everything and everyone we love is threatened by the existence of nuclear weapons. Let's think about who we love, let's care for each other, and use that power to create a world free of these monstrous weapons of racism, patriarchy, and colonialism. We can do that together. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Mari, for organizing this event. Okay, we have a special speaker today from, uh, come, come up, Carlos. 
from the climate movement. So we, we want to hear what you have to say. Sure. Um, well, happy Earth Day, comrades. <laughs> we all know that we need Earth Day every day. We're long past that point. But I want to point out that tomorrow is three months until Earth Day. And tomorrow, what I try and we're trying to call Earth Day of January, is marked by a very important one year anniversary. So I really i am grateful that we were invited in here. Um, we are called the Earth Flag Brigade, and yet, though I'm speaking right now, we more want to speak with this flag, because we're going to a place in just a minute where right across the street, thank you, um, right across the street there's 190 some odd flags. However, nation states have not served us. If nation states, the European nation state has led us to the point where there are nuclear weapons. We're at the ad absurdum endpoint of these illegitimate formations that do not serve the people. We, the 99%, do not want nuclear weapons on this earth. So let our voices be heard as we walk. Let these flags say that this is our home. This is what we're defending. The rest of it is just the military industrial complex and the warmongers and we we don't want any more of that humans want the extinction of nuclear weapons not our own extinction thank you um there's some people that need to speak too so um maybe um jun song can you say uh, just a couple words and al could you say a couple words This action moment, moment, everything prayer towards. So I like to introduce our. He's a Ramapo Ramape tribe people. They are living Manhattan original people. So I very appreciate our is here because they are original people. Where to go? You know from. 500 years. So he gonna offering prayer to this land. Anushik, he shall mo kwen. Anushik, watch him man into. Elamiliang, kakanaki, walk. B. Walk. Kashun. Walk. Dindao. Anushik. 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 So, oftentimes when we talk about land acknowledgements, we focus on the human world. I also wanted to acknowledge the, the natural world as well. And in that prayer that I just said, it's from the original language of, of this, these lands, the Munsi language. And what I said was, thanks to who created us from thought, thanks to the Great Spirit for giving us our Mother Earth, the waters, air, and, and fire. And I have this water here from the, from the Ramapo Mountains, the sacred Ramapo Mountains. And I, I, I almost made it to Manhattan, but I walked to near Manhattan to a place called Bergenfield. Um, with this water, and I'm going to offer it to the uh, the, the trees here, um, because we don't we don't really acknowledge them and don't respect them as beings. Um, and I think that's the problem is that we take our, our water for granted and our air. And uh, uranium don't let, don't let them fool you. I mean it, it's bad from A to Z. It needs to stay where it is. So whether it's nuclear power, whether it's nuclear weapons, it's just killing us. Uh, I know in the Navajo Nation they say that I think 20% of the women are have been exposed to uranium. 
detectable amounts of uranium. So it's, it's a human rights issue as well. Uh, so I just wanted to say I'm, I'm glad to be here. Also, yeah, the, the doomsday clock. I mean, they look at the climate change and the nuclear weapons, and today is a, is a good, strong step towards pushing that clock backwards. Unfortunately, we're taking down our treaties, other treaties. So we need to address that as well, but today is a good day, and I, I just wanted to say on behalf of myself as a member of the Ramapo Nation, thank everyone for being here. I'll give this water to the tree and, 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 and gratitude towards the trees as well. So honestly, thank you. I, I forget our son starts peace work from his nation, Amauau, from 12 o'clock night time to Bargain's Field to this morning to join our work. Uh, first, uh, we got a couple more speakers, so hang on. Is everybody okay? I'm just checking. Okay. All right. So Casey, uh, Casey Brooks Richardson is back of me. She is a youth activist. She is with the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation and Reverse the Trend. And she's got a lot going on. <laughs> My name is Casey. As they just said, I'm a junior in college studying international relations. And today I'd really like to speak on behalf of my generation and those that will come after us, despite the fact that we have no say in today's nuclear policy, or we're even alive when most of those policies were put into effect, it's us that will inherit this world that they have poisoned and continue to threaten every day through their mere existence. The level of peril the world is in due to nuclear weapons has never been as bad as it is today, and it is only getting worse. Today, not only do we have to live with that knowledge, but the generation which came before us that created this problem expects us to fix their mistakes, and we will not stand for it. We did not cause this problem, but we will end it. And that starts right here with all of us who are passionate about the survival of the human race. It is up to us, the informed minority, to spread awareness to future generations in the hope that they will not be forced to live in a world that is 100 seconds away from utter annihilation. The United States is a global leader and we need to show the U that we will not stand for its obstructed views against the TPNW. It must ratify the treaty. Very few activists can say that their cause is truly a matter of life and death, but ours is paramount and essential to human survival. We need to show them that enough is enough and we will not live in fear any longer. And that's why we have to march and show them what we believe in. Thank you. All right, so moving moving along. Poor People's Campaign, Lars Swan, come up. Say a couple words, because, yeah, give it to Thank you. I'm Lars with the New York State Poor People's Campaign. A national call for a moral revival. This, uh, our country's all pretty screwed up. We're a really backwards nation here. It's uh, not a banana republic, more of a bomb republic. Our economy is is failing because we have a health crisis and we have people dying. We have 100 and f over 140 million people who are poor or who are one health crisis away from being wiped out economically. We have people <laughs> losing their homes, being evicted. Anyway, I don't want to keep you standing here. I want to get walking. Uh, all I have to say is uh, the Poor People's Campaign is a nonviolent revolution, but it is a revolution. And we see militarism as being one of the evils interconnected with the other evils, environmental destruction, lack of health care, poverty, sexism, racism, all the rest. It's all one big ugly system that has to change and we have to change it. Thank you for being here and move. <laughs> here 
is Emma Pike. She is a peace educator and a member of Reverse the Trend. She'll tell you more about that. Emma? Yes, thank you so much, Sally. And thank you so much, everyone, for being here. As Sally said, my name is Emma Pike. I am a peace educator and also I'm here today on behalf of an initiative called Reverse the Trend, which works to amplify the voices and activities of youth, um, youth activists, young people who are fighting for nuclear disarmament and climate justice. And recently, I was on social media, as many of us are these days, and I saw someone post this very famous quote by a previous US president, John F. Kennedy, and it goes, ask not what your country can do for you, Ask what you can do for your country. And those are beautiful words, but I think actually today we need to be asking also what our country can do for us. Or rather, what is the bare minimum that any country should do for its citizens and its inhabitants? And we can think of many things, provide education for all, access to health care for all, basic necess human necessities, but I think that before anything, a country's most fundamental duty to its inhabitants is to keep them safe and to never infringe on their right to exist, to never infringe on their right to life. And of course the possession and the development of nuclear weapons is the ultimate infringement on our right to life. Yes. As we know very well, nuclear weapons quite literally have the power to end human life as we know it. But a revelation for me was actually that nuclear weapons don't just have the potential to wipe out human life and life on Earth as we know it. In this country, as some of the speakers before me have alluded to, nukes are actually killing people every day. And I'll tell you what I mean. In 2020, in the first year of this now two-year-long pandemic, the United States spent 37.4 billion dollars on nuclear weapons in one year. That's 37.4 billion dollars of taxpayer money. In a year when literally hundreds of thousands of people were dying from COVID-19, not to mention any other possibly preventable cause of death or human suffering that you could name, the United States government decided that it was more important to spend 37.4 billion dollars on weapons of mass destruction than it was to spend that money on saving and improving the lives of its citizens and its inhabitants, its people. I think any person would agree that this is unacceptable. So nukes don't just threaten our lives, they actually directly affect our lives every single day. I know this is a grim picture to paint, but the fantastic news is that exactly one year ago, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons entered into force and nuclear weapons became illegal under international law. Yes, and as we can see, this is a truly, truly global movement. And around the world, almost 90 countries now have signed this treaty, with the majority of those ratifying it as well. And overwhelmingly, it's the people, it's the people just like us who have made this happen. It's the people who make their voices heard and influence those who have decision-making power. And if there's one thing that New Yorkers have taught me, it is that New Yorkers are experts at making themselves heard. So friends, let's march today to the U.S. mission to make our voices heard and make it clear that we the people demand our right to exist in peace. We demand that the U.S. takes one step toward fulfilling its most fundamental duty to all who live on this land, to sign and ratify the ban treaty. Let's choose life. Thank you. Okay, Raging Grannies. So happy birthday to the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty. And we're going to sing Nuclear Proliferation. Ready? Yeah, you can New Nuclear Proliferation. We must stop its global spread. Or the people of the whole world have to live in fear and dread. We must all tell 
for the nations. We cannot have nuclear war. Peace and justice, calm and safety. That is what we're marching for. We must destroy atomic weapons. We must make them disappear. We cannot have our lives shattered. And those bombs are everywhere. Now there's a treaty to ban these weapons. Yes. U.S. sign on, do not wait. And the people of the whole world will cheer and celebrate. Okay, next up is Sally Campbell from the Morning Heights of, of Friends, Morning Heights, Morningside Quakers. She has a song for us. So, I have a song which was uh, was inspired by Gandhi. Um, as you may have heard, there's a phrase that goes around, you must be the change you wish to see in the world, which I think is a wonderful phrase. But people kept saying, what do you mean? Don't tell me what to do. You must be, what do you mean? So I asked, I had to get, I happened to get to meet the grandson of Gandhi. And I said, what did Gandhi say? He said, we must be the change. So I sang this, and as you get a chance, sing along. We must be, be the change, be the change, be the change. We must be, be the change we wish to see in the world. We must be, be the change, be the change, be the change. We must be, be the change.